Do you want to start making YouTube videos, but you don't currently have enough money to buy a mirrorless or a DSLR camera? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how I can get high quality footage just by using your iPhone. For this video, I will be using my iPhone 12 Pro, but if you have an iPhone 11 or newer with at least two camera lenses on the rear, you should be able to get similar footage in terms of quality. But anyways, without wasting any more time, let me switch over to my iPhone camera so that you can see just how good the quality is. All right, so now I've switched over to using the camera on my iPhone, so hopefully the quality still looks good, but anyways, before I really dive into things, I want to thank Craig Miss for this video idea. And if you guys have any video ideas, you know, that you want me to um, make a video on, such as a tutorial or something that you think could be helpful, then make sure to put them in the comments below. And if it's a good idea, you know, I might make a video about it. But anyways, I'm gonna film this current section on my iPhone, and then we're gonna move on to color grading this um, footage from my iPhone in DaVinci Resolve, which is the editing software that I use. Some of the same rules will still apply even if you use another editing software. But anyways, let's move on to how to optimize your iPhone so that you can use the best settings possible to get the best quality for your videos. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is download the Final Cut Pro app. Now it's free on your phone and the reason that you want to download this app is because it's going to give you a lot of adjustability um, that you're not going to get in the normal camera app. So it's going to allow you to adjust the white balance, the ISO, the shutter speed as well. And you can also use auto and manual focus. So it gives you a lot of, you know, settings control similar to what you would get on a mirrorless or a DSLR camera. So definitely download that. It's free and it's also from Apple, so it's kind of native to um, your iPhone as well. Then once you go into the Final Cut Pro app, you're gonna wanna set your white balance manually. Now I typically set mine at 5600 Kelvin because a lot of times I record during the day and I have natural sunlight coming out of my windows and the natural sunlight coming out during the day is usually, you know, 5600 Kelvin. But even if I'm recording at night, I'll set my key lights to 5600 Kelvin as well. And yeah, so I'll just record at that temperature. So I always set my white balance to 5600 Kelvin when I'm recording inside doing a talking head video um, in a controlled environment or even when I'm recording outside um, in natural daylight. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is set your ISO and your shutter speed manually. Now shutter speed is pretty simple, just make sure to set it to double your frame rate. Now I typically record in 4K 24 FPS, so I set my shutter speed to one over 48. As for the ISO, I typically set it to 100 during the day because you know, the natural light coming in through my window is enough to get proper exposure with an ISO of 100. But if it's darker or later at night, I might raise the ISO up a little bit um, to like 400. I also have some key lights to help as well. So, you know, even if I'm recording it during the day and you know, it's a little darker, I could just turn on my key lights um, and that'll add more light so that I can keep my ISO low at 100 while also getting proper exposure for my videos. The next important thing I wanna mention is to make sure to use the normal camera lens on your camera and not the wide angle or the telephoto. And the reason for this is because the normal angle lens, at least in my opinion, um, looks the best. It has the highest quality, you know, the most like depth. If you're doing a talking head video like this one, the next thing that you wanna do is make sure that you have daylight or artificial lighting, like, you know, the key lights that I use um, facing behind your camera. And this is gonna help you to get the most even lighting, which is gonna make your videos look very professional. And it's also gonna help you to get proper lighting so you know that your videos aren't underexposed and that you get proper exposure so that your videos aren't too dark. And obviously you're gonna wanna get a tripod. Now you can get an Amazon tripod, you know, an Amazon Basics one for like 20 something dollars. Um, if you really want to, you can get a more expensive one like the one I have, but that's not really necessary. But yeah, make sure that you have a good shot before you start recording. So do some test recordings to make sure that your, you know, your chair or your face um, and your body is like in frame 
so that you know when you um, go to um, edit your footage, you know, you don't have to re-record your video all over again. Now, if you had a mirrorless camera with a flip up screen, you could just look at, you know, the flip up screen to make sure that you're in frame. But since your iPhone rear facing camera, unfortunately, there's no flip out screen or way, any way to see yourself. You just have to do test recordings and make sure that you're in frame. And yeah, you know, so it can be tricky. Um, but once you get a good shot, you know, you know, just start recording, you know, I know it takes a while sometimes, but the more that you adjust, you should be able to get the shot that you want. I also recommend using an external mic like this Hollyland Larkin 2 that I'm using. Um, and this is because the audio coming out of this mic is going to be a lot better than the audio coming out of your straight out of your iPhone mic. Now, if you want to get this mic for yourself, you can get the combo version for around $140 and I would highly recommend the combo version um, because if you want to upgrade to a mirrorless camera in the future, it'll allow you to use this microphone with a mirrorless camera. Whereas if you get the other versions, you'll only be able to use it with your phone. So just get the combo version just in case. But anyways, I'm going to show you guys a quick comparison between this mic and the um, mic coming, you know, straight out of my iPhone. So yeah, let's roll the comparison. Testing, testing, testing. All right, so this is the audio coming straight out of the Hollyland Lark M2. And now we're gonna show you how this compares to the audio coming straight out of my iPhone. Testing, testing, testing. All right, so this is the audio coming out of my iPhone camera. I have it about an arm's length away. And in post, you're gonna see how this audio compares to the audio that I previously recorded on my Hollyland Lark M2. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how I edit my footage in DaVinci Resolve, um, which is the editing software that I use. Now I recommend using DaVinci Resolve, um, especially if you're starting out, it's a great editing software, it's free. But if you're already using it, uh, another editing software, the same like settings um, that I'm gonna adjust um, will apply. Um, I'm just gonna go over the basics. Um, I'm not gonna get too deep into color grading. I'll just show you guys, you know, the basics so that you can um, make your iPhone footage look very, very professional and high quality. So yeah, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you guys how I color grade my iPhone footage there. All right, so now we're in DaVinci Resolve and what I'm gonna do is go down to the color page here and as you can see, we got the footage that I shot on my iPhone. We're gonna go over the color wheels. Um, now, if you're new to DaVinci Resolve, basically the lift are, is your shadows, the gamma is your midtones, the gain is your highlights, and the offset is just your exposure. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, I have a node up here. So I'm just gonna click on node label and I'm gonna label the node shadows and highlights. Um, so we're just going to adjust the lift and the gain, which are basically the shadows and the highlights respectively. So here at lift, um, I'm just going to lower, lower the shadows a little bit, increase the highlights or the gain some, get something that looks kind of, I don't know, like kind of cinematic, get that like you know, like that moody type of shadow, I guess you could say. And then if my image ended up being, you know, overexposed, we could just create a new node corrector, add node corrector, and then node label, um, title this exposure, right? And so what we're going to do here is go to the offset um, color panel here, and we could just, you know, if it's overexposed, we could lower it some. I think it might have been a little overexposed here. I don't know, could play it back. Actually, I think I'll just reset it. You know, I think the exposure was okay in this shot. We've adjusted the shadows and it's nice to kind of split this up and do like things on separate nodes. So do your shadows and highlights on one node and then do, you know, your exposure on another node and then, you know, adding a LUT on another node, which we're gonna do that as well. Um, so after you know you have your shadows, your highlights, everything on your iPhone, um, you can also adjust the contrast. So I'm gonna add a new node, click corrector. I'm gonna label the node contrast. 
Now I'm gonna put it on this timeline. So now we have three nodes. I could lower the contrast, you know, think that looks a little like, you know, like pale, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, color, you know, vibrance in it. I think the contrast is actually okay. You know, as you can see, if we lower it, all the color, it gets very, you know, bland, I guess you could say. And if we make it higher, you know, it gets really, starts to look really weird. At least, you know, that looks pretty weird to me. I'm just gonna, you know, try to find something nice. We could lower the contrast a little bit. You know, I think this actually, you know, looks decent. Or, you know, if you want to, you could keep it the same. Uh, as for the white balance, um, I set it properly at 5600 Kelvin. Um, so we're good. I shouldn't have to adjust the white balance at all. So I shouldn't have to mess with the temperature or tint here. But if you do need to adjust the white balance, all you have to do is click the color wheel here click on something that's white like this and DaVinci Resolve will automatically adjust the white balance for you. So that's an easy way to do it. So that's nice. So now the final thing we're gonna do is uh, add a LUT. So I'm gonna create a new node, label it LUT. And this is gonna be our fourth node. I'll add it to the end here. And then we're gonna go to LUTs at the top here. And as you can see, these are some LUTs, you know, some like cinematic LUTs that I downloaded. Um, you can go download your own LUTs, but I'll leave um, the LUTs, the Cinecolor LUTs that I'm using in the description down below if you wanna check them out for yourself. But yeah, I'm just gonna scroll down, find one that I like that gives the kind of look I, I'm going for. This is all personal preference. I think I'm just gonna stick to the first one here. So I'll double click it and it should automatically add the LUT here. And yeah, that's pretty much all you need to do to color grade your footage um, to get, you know, nice looking footage with your iPhone camera. You know, this is pretty basic, shouldn't be super complicated. I hope, you know, I explained it, you know, at least, you know, decently well. And then if you wanna see how your color grade looked before you applied it and after you applied it, all you have to do is go to one of the nodes, press Alt and D, and it should disable all of them. And yeah, you can see this is how our color graded look before we adjusted, you know, did some color correction and color grading, and this is how it looks after. So before, after. As you can see, you know, it looks a lot more dynamic, especially with the LUT, but yeah, we could go back if we wanna adjust it a little more. I'll actually could go to contrast and maybe, you know, I could pull it down a bit. You know, sometimes even after, you know, you add a LUT, you might wanna adjust um, some of the other stuff a little bit because the LUT will kind of change the look. So you might wanna, you know, change the shadows and the highlights and the, you know, exposure, contrast in order to compensate for that. But I think this looks, you know, pretty solid, pretty good color grade. I could, you know, edit the video, you know, cut up the clips, add some B-roll, all of that stuff. And then once I'm done, I could just go to the deliver page here and export it. Anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for the tutorial. I hope this video helped you guys out, especially if y'all are just trying to start a YouTube channel, you're not ready to invest in a mirrorless camera right now. Recording on your iPhone is a great way to get started, you know, for a very affordable price. But there are a couple things you're gonna wanna invest in, like a wireless lav mic, like this Hollyland mic, and you know, a tripod but you could get this Hollyland mic for like 140, you could get a tripod for like 30 bucks. So that ends up, you know, being under $200. And then, you know, using the smartphone you already have, you can get started recording, filming your videos. Um, just make sure, you know, you use good lighting techniques, use lighting behind your subject. And also thank you, Craig Miss, for the video idea. Again, I think that this tutorial will help a lot of you guys out. And and if it wasn't for him, you know, I wouldn't have even thought of this idea. So thank Craig Miss again for this video idea. But yeah, thanks for watching like always. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.